that type of thing. That's that's one thing. The steel pierce, they're wild animals. It, no, end of story. No matter what anyone says, they are wild animals. Uh, and we have great sanctuaries. We need some of these sanctuaries that are accredited. The United States Department of Agriculture, State of California has strict laws and all that type of thing. But a lion is a very, it's called the king of beasts, obviously for a certain reason. Uh, this was a male lion uh, in the wild. Usually the female will do the, the kill or whatever it might be. But in this situation, again, I, I've tried to read everything I read about this the last hour, and I can't seem to find anything else out. That what I need to know is, again, we go back to why it was there. A lion is a powerful animal. Uh, the, you got to make they can tell a, take down a, a Cape buffalo in less than 15 seconds, or even less than that. Uh, so you're dealing with something here that is 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 you know is dangerous. I'm not going to say like a, a loaded gun. I don't need to get letters on that. I'm just saying these animals, it's like let's say a grenade or something going off. And that, who knows what could turn an animal? We might have seen something, heard something. Uh, you never know with a wild animal what could happen. But in the in our in our park at the Columbus Zoo, uh, once we have the animals, if they have to be taken from the mom for some reason or another, we might raise them to three to six months, and they're no longer. Uh, we had maybe tigers last year at six months. No one goes in with them unless the veterinarian's there, unless they're put down for a physical, that type of thing. So it's just something we don't do that. Now, do I use a cheetah for some of my shows? I've been asked that question already uh, this evening. Yes, I do. We have two people with it with two different types of collars. The cheetah is, is a, a, a wild cat, but it's also a cat that's not a very powerful cat. But we try and educate folks, and that's what we try and do our best in the zoological world. Well, you brought the cheetah onto my set, I remember. It was a fully grown cheetah. It was right. extremely powerful, and I was quite shocked, actually, to be that close up to a cat that size. First time I'd been in such close proximity, and I, I could sense real raw power, and that wasn't a lion. Um, so I can only imagine what no, a fully grown yeah. lion would would feel like in close proximity. Let me ask you this, Jack. I mean, what it will do, as all these incidents tend to do, it will raise the debate again about whether a fully grown lion like this this beast, Couscous, should ever be in captivity in this way. Uh, clearly, it, well, it's, it's an ongoing debate. What is your answer to people who say they shouldn't be in captivity? Full stop. Well, the, the point is, Pierce, in the zoological world, they're there. And 99.9% .9 of them that are there come from other zoological parks, not the wild. And what we've done there, Pierce, is, for, is a little bit over $42 million by the zoos in this country, the 100, 212, 21 zoos. Four, $42 million was sent to animals in the wild last year, by the way. The research we have in the wild going on now, what we learn about lions in, in the zoological world is very important. The lion is an ambassador to their, to their species. The zoological parks today, most animals live better than most people throughout the world. So, you know, we debate, continue to debate this, and, and this isn't going to phase the Columbus Zoo or any other zoo in this country. We're going to continue to have our lions, we're going to continue to educate the public, and we're going to continue to tell them that this is a king of beasts, this is a wild animal, it's an animal we don't want to lose in nature. And by the way, lions have disappeared, uh, Pierce, you need to know this. People say back in the wild. Lions have gone down the tube. Since I was in Africa in 1978, we have lost over 60% of the lion population in Africa. 60%. We cannot continue that, or the lions will not be here anywhere in the wild in the next 20 years. That's why we have the zoological parks today, to teach us more about the lion and what we can do to help save the lion. Jenny, final thought from you about this. It's obviously just a really sad day all around, isn't it? I mean, obviously for the poor woman it's who's really been sad. killed, but also for the lion and, and for everyone really involved. Right, the, the whole thing is, is sad, Pierce. The, the family, the woman, the gentleman that owns that sanctuary, I guarantee you are suffering more than just as much as the family is. And uh, this is not something, you know, this is, yes, we have these things happen, Pierce. Yes, there are people that might be in a, a NASCAR race. But, but again, the analogy is very simple. We will continue our work with these animals in the zoological parks that are accredited throughout this country, as well as the accredited sanctuaries. Without them, we will not have any more lions in the wild. We will not have any more lions other than you see in a painting or in a, a movie or somewhere. Right. And Jenny, a final word from you? You know, uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to the family uh, of this young woman, and obviously she loved animals, and, uh, you know, a place like Survival, Pro Project Survival's Cat Haven is, it's really important. It's important for people to go there and experience and see these animals because they can't see them in the wild. And when you get that experience, you, you really care about these animals and you want to make a difference. So, you know, uh, m my thought is, uh, you know, support these types of educational places. Jenny and Jack, thank you both very much for joining me. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Coming next, Roger Ailes.